Welcome back to Small of Choice. I am your host, Veronica Kamel. And in this series of episodes, we will be discussing the beautiful hymns of our Coptic Church, which have dated over multiple millennia. Bushoy Suriyad will guide us as we venture through the history of our church, discuss its rites, and recognize important figures along with much more. Okay, to start off this episode, can you discuss music notation in today's age of Coptic music? We recognize that it was provided to us in Raghib Muftah's work of the Saint Basil liturgy. And it, it was most commonly available for the Greek, Syrian, and Ethiopian church even. You know, you would think it would be more common in the Coptic church than the Ethiopian. But the Coptic church was persecuted more where a lot of their notes, if they were prepared in the early ages, the middle ages, the persecution ages, they were destroyed. Yeah. And so from that point, we as a Coptic nation relied a lot on oral tradition, which we spoke about in the last episode. One additional thing to oral tradition from learning orally from the cantors that pass it down orally is the way that they teach using the waving of fingers and hands. You see it a lot when we're in church. I've seen it in a head class. Yes, a good number of times. And, and then they like raise their voice a little higher when it's a higher part. Yeah, and then they point with their finger and they, and, and, uh, they do these things. But uh, we'll share a picture also about how it's very significant this oral tradition to be used with the f waving of fingers and hands. Um, Wait, I also remember like when they'd write it on a board, they'd like put, if it's like a, if it's a long note, they'd put the uh, hazet like lines and like waves yeah, next it, to the words. Well, there are manuscripts yeah. that show that back, even back to the third century, there were as you would call them hazet yes or lines mm -hmm. that are not that are not musical notes they're just a way to indicate you know when you are going to extend mm -hmm. elongate shorten uh do a loop de loop mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it <laughs> you know uh in that particular hymn mm -hmm. but um nonetheless it was it was a form of assistance to the deacons that required that whenever they needed to, to sharpen their gift of the talent of memory mm -hmm. that we spoke about in the last episode. But what we want to just harp on a little bit is the using of fingers and the waving of hands when a cantor would pass down oral tradition. This actually has a name and it's not new as a matter of fact. It's, it was called Kironomy or Kironomy. Mm -hmm. And this tradition we see even carved in hieroglyphic statues on the, on the temple walls in hieroglyphic Egypt mm -hmm. of how the musical cantors or the musical chanters would use their hands and wave it in a motion. And we'll also share a picture of the hieroglyphics uh, um, next to a picture of one of the cantors mm -hmm. waving their hands and it's the same exact action that's being used today. Um, so th this is what we see then in the past yeah. in those ages and this is what we see today. Thank you so much. Kironomy. Kironomy? Or yeah, or Kironomy. I'm gonna remember that. Yeah. Well, so I'll try. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bishoy. Anytime. Um, okay, this is a very broad question, you mm -hmm. could say. What is the Holy Spirit? I guess what you may call a broad question. It's like, it's like it a, a very big topic. Yeah, it has, it has a very simple um, answer. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the Lord and giver of life in the Nicene Creed. So when we say the Creed, we say we believe in one God, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. We believe in the Lord, the giver of life, who is of one essence, uh, with the Father and the Son. And He is the Creator Spirit, and the Creator Spirit present before the creation of the universe, uh, and through the power of this Holy Spirit, everything was made in Jesus Christ, by God the Father. 
Simple, it, simple question, simple answer. The, well, the answer, <laughs> well, if you break mind. it down, it'll make sense more. Yeah. But it's, uh, it goes back to the meaning of the Holy Trinity. As soon as we can grasp the meaning of the three hypostases of the Holy Trinity, we know exactly um, what the meaning is of the Holy Spirit, or we know exactly who is the Holy Spirit, we should say. Thank you so much, Bashir. You're welcome. We are going to take a short break and listen to a hymn from Coptic Hymns in English. We will be back shortly. <laughs> back to a small choice. The next question I have for you is when and how do we receive the Holy Spirit? We receive the Holy Spirit, we learn, in the sacraments of the church, one of the seven sacraments of the church, through the Meirun and our commitment to eternal life. So um, in a more spiritual sense, the path to receiving the Holy Spirit is to exercise faith in Christ. When you exercise faith in Christ, you are enabling the Holy Spirit within you mm -hmm. because you've received it after you've risen from the, the water of baptism. And when you exercise this faith, you exercise this faith in Christ to repentance. So when you practice the Holy Spirit to continually do a metanoia or repent, you are instilling the work of the Holy Spirit within you to purify yourself and accept the Holy Spirit within you and do the work of faith in Christ. Um, and we can become clean through qualifying uh, for the atonement or the salvation that Christ gave us through this Holy Spirit that He's given us. Because it was through His cross that after he rose, he sent his Holy Spirit. So it's a consistent reminder that we are atoned or we are purified from our sins using the Holy Spirit Christ gave us, reminding us of his crucifixion. And it's a continual cycle. Thank you so much, Bishoy. Thank you. And that concludes this episode of Ismo Ibshais. If you have any questions, please send it to the email in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us and please join us next time.